and welcome to At Home with AJ. I'm glad that you're letting the Kingsville Public Library into your home and that you're joining me in mine. Today, we're gonna make a spring pillow, but more importantly, we're gonna talk about how to use freezer paper. I'm really excited about that. It's a fun and very versatile thing for projects. And what you're going to need today to make this is you're going to need your freezer paper, you're going to need some needle and thread, you're going to need some pom-poms for your bunny tails. You're going to need either scissors or an X-Acto knife. You're going to need some spring colored paints or whatever kind of paint you would like. These are simple little acrylics that you can buy for about 50 cents a bottle at Walmart or Joann's. You're going to need some foam brushes. You're going to need a hot glue gun. Um, it's nice if you have a heat tool or a hair dryer, either one will work. You will need an iron and you will need a piece of cardboard. You will also need some sort of template for your bunny unless you're really talented and can do it by hand. Uh, you can use a cookie cutter, you can find pictures on the internet or even something out of a coloring book. So you have a couple different options as to what kind of pillow you want to make. Uh, this is actually an envelope style pillow that they call it, and it just has a little pillow form inside. You can make one of those. I'm not going to show you how to make that today um, because when it comes to sewing, I'm kind of a hack. There are wonderful YouTube videos out there. All you have to do is search the word envelope pillow and somebody that is way more talented and a much more proficient sewer can show you how to make one of these envelope pillows. The other option that you have is um, these are actually, I'm not sure if they're placemats or they're cloth napkins, but I've had them for quite some time. They've been hanging around. I haven't been doing anything with them. And so I decided to make them into pillows. So if you wanted to, you could simply sew these together with a simple needle and thread. You don't need a sewing machine. Um, if you have one, you can do that and simply stuff the pillow. Or again, you can make the envelope style with the insert inside. So we're going to be working with freezer paper today, which is a very versatile craft item. We are going to actually be making stencils from the freezer paper. And this is a great thing to do to make a pillow like we're going to today. Or if you have, especially if you have young children and they maybe get a stain on their clothes, this same stencil principle that we're going to use, you could use to kind of hide that or just to make really cool shirts. So hopefully you've got a template that you either got from a coloring book, got off the internet, cut it out, and you're actually just gonna put it down on your freezer paper, on the paper side, there's actually a kind of a shiny side and a waxy side and then the smooth side. You're gonna trace your image onto the smooth side. And when we cut it, we're gonna end up wanting something either like this or like this, I cheated. I used my Cricut because I have no talent. Um, so if you have a Cricut, you can do that. Keep in mind when the library is open, we do have a Cricut available for our patrons to use. Um, we have access and we have lots of different images. So when you cut your freezer paper in order to make your stencil, you're actually gonna wanna try and cut it down here in the wide area by folding your freezer paper in half and just making a small snip just a tiny little slit right in there so that you're then able to get inside that image and cut around it, okay? Another way to do this is if you have an X-Acto knife, you can take your freezer paper and lay it on a piece of cardboard and just trim along that line that you have traced. And then once you have it all done, you will either have a stencil that looks like this, or maybe you're gonna do three individual ones and it's ready to go on your work surface. You're gonna take your pillow, whatever style you've chose to do, and you're, you've done an envelope pillow, you're gonna put your cardboard in the back. If you've chosen to do a regular stitched pillow, you can take a piece of uh, poster board or any kind of thin newspaper and roll it up, put it in your opening, and then smooth it out. And now we are going to take our freezer paper stencil. We're gonna lay it down on our cloth, and we're gonna begin ironing it. 
okay? And you're just gonna use medium to high setting on your iron, and you're just gonna kinda go around and just sort of very carefully press your wide areas to begin with, and then if when you get to these little pointy areas, you're just going to kind of want to press the iron down. You don't want to slide back and forth because once you bend those tips up on the freezer paper, it's really hard to get them back down and where you want them to be again. Um, and again, freezer paper is a great way to make a stencil on cloth or on fabric. You can do wall hangings. Um, again, you can, you can make t-shirts with them. You can... You can hide imperfections if you have clothes that are stained. Um, and it is very inexpensive. You can find it at Walmart or the grocery store in with the wax paper and the foil. And I got this roll that has, I think it's a hundred, yes, 150 feet and it was less than $10. Okay. And so now when we feel like our stencil is down, you'll want to check your little corners right here these edges just to make sure that they're touching all the way down because we don't want paint to seep through there. And when we go to paint our stencil, we're going to just dab across it. We're not going to color or actually paint across it. Um, it's kind of like coloring, but not inside the lines. You're actually want to gonna go over those lines and not push your stencil paper up. So we are going to get ready and do my little Mr. Rogers routine here and get my apron on and we'll get ready to paint, to paint our bunnies. And again, we're just using some nice uh, 50 cent paint from the local Walmart and we're just gonna dab, dab, dab. And so now we're on to our next color. And again, we're just being very careful to go over our stencil and not try and push up those edges so that we stay within the lines. And so as we kind of finish up painting here, you kind of want to check over the area that you've already painted. Make sure that you've covered up any of the uh, fabric spots so that there's no pink showing through unless you kind of like that look. Um, that's absolutely fine. And now that we have it covered, this is where you'll want to use either your hair dryer or your heat tool to kind of just go over top of this so that it's not wet and it's just tacky. And I'll show you how to do that. We have our heat tool. If you don't have a heat tool, you can use a hair dryer. If you don't have a hair dryer, you can just let it air dry for a little bit. Okay. Remember what we're trying to do here is just get some of the uh, extra moisture off. We don't want to completely dry it at this point. So we're going to turn our heat tool on and we're just going to start drying until it's, I think the technical term is tacky. Okay, so now it should be where it's tacky enough that we are going to now carefully peel up the paper. And before you do this, you kind of want to just check your edges to make sure there's not any little puddles of paint along the edge in case you kind of fold over onto your fabric and you're going to just want to gently pull this up nice and easy um, and sometimes if you've got somebody else at home that can kind of give you a hand holding down your fabric that's always helpful and we just pull our freezer paper up we're going to lay that right over there and now we have our stenciled bunnies and we're just going to let these go ahead and air dry or if you're in a hurry you could use your heat tool um, but once they're dry we'll do the next step. So now it's time to put on our little tails so we're going to grab our pom-poms and our hot glue gun remember the rule about the hot glue gun you always want to leave it right side up don't lay it on its side otherwise the hot glue melts into the innards of the glue gun and kills it. So we're just going to take a little dab of glue on the back of the bunny and put his tail on. Now, if you're thinking that you're going to need to wash these pillows rather frequently, and you're afraid that your pom-poms won't hold up, you can always get some little pieces of Velcro and just Velcro your pom-poms on so that you can take them off and on in order to wash this. The paint will hold up in the wash. I have done this on shirts and 
tablecloths and they have washed multiple times very well. I'm breaking one of my own rules because I'm also grabbing the spider webs of the glue gun and you're not supposed to do that until your project is dry. So resist the urge to pluck those spider webs. So now our tails are on and we're ready to put our pillow onto the form. So we'll take our pillow form um, you can buy one of these at the store. You can use a throw pillow that you already have on your couch or I made this one It's actually from a sheet that my dog destroyed um, So rather than throwing it out because it was fairly new um, I saved it. You just sew around in a square stuff it full of um, If you have pillow stuffing, that's great. If you don't you can shred some old clothes and we're just going to go ahead and fit our pillow into the back of our envelope style pillow. If you chose to make just a standard square pillow, you're going to go ahead and stuff it at this point and then sew it closed. And then once it's in there, we'll just kind of fluff it around a little bit. So this is my spring pillow. If you end up making this project, be sure to post it in the comments underneath this video because I'd love to see your creativity. You can share your feedback with us at reference at kingsvillelibrary.org. Thanks for letting the Kingsville Public Library into your home today and joining me in mine. And I hope you're staying well, you're staying safe, and you're practicing your social distancing, and we'll see you real soon.